All right, everybody, welcome to our extra special virtual expedition today. We've got a hi, I see some of our future presenters waving at us. Um, I'm so excited. This is an extra special virtual expedition. We are live streaming for our very first ever worldwide create project challenge. So exciting. Um, we're also so lucky because we have Mr. Marlowe with us today. He has 20 years of experience in technology. He's an industry expert and he is going to talk to us about building computers. And then we're going to get to see some awesome projects that some of your Prenda peers created building their own computers. It is going to be so fun. I'm gonna have us kick it off and get started. Mr. Marlowe, go for it. Thanks, Danielle. How's it going, everybody? I'm Marlowe Daly and I live in the beautiful, sunny Seattle. Um, welcome to my home. And I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about computers and how you build them. I, we had some great submissions uh, come in. If you're familiar with the Create Challenge, we asked all of the students who are participating uh, to do the same Create project at one time. And over the last two weeks, they've submitted those projects. Everybody got together. It was a brand new Create project. And then they submitted them, and we looked at all of them, and there were some awesome. I'm going to share my screen here so everybody can see a few of the cool things. There were some awesome designs that we saw. I'm only going to go over a few of them. So there were great submissions. And the ones I'm going to talk about in my presentation today to kind of talk about how you build computers are great examples of some of the principles I want to share with you on how you build and design a computer because there's a lot that goes into it. And I'm gonna talk about things that I've talked about to people at Microsoft and HP and Dell and Lenovo and Asus and all those other guys who make your awesome computers that you're using now. So let's just get kicked off. Um, in, the, in the beginning of the Create Challenge, I talked about the different types of computers that there are. You've got tablets, you've got desktops, you've got laptops, convertibles, portable all-in-ones. And those are the ones that are available today that people are familiar with. What we really ask you to do is, we asked all the students to build a computer or design one in their head that they would like to use for schoolwork. So the perfect computer, and think about how they might put it together, the components they might use, the cost, how much it would cost, what they would prioritize and how they would build it. And we saw examples across this spectrum. And we also saw some really great creativity from these students. And the first student, the th first thing I wanna talk about is as you think about building a computer, most people don't do it the right way. Not, not you, you of course, you do it the right way. A lot of people go immediately to the specifications. I need this much RAM and this much computing power and a GPU and a CPU and a muggly muggle and muggle mug. But when you're building a computer and you're in the industry, you really want to think about why you're going to use it. And we're going to finish this session going through some of those things you do in your classroom and what that might mean for you in building that computer. But here are the questions that I always ask. I first of all think, who is going to use this computer? What kind of characteristics does it need to have for that person? How are they going to use it? And where they might use it? So as you think, as we walk through some of these examples, I want you all out there and all of you in the classroom or participating with me on Zoom to also think about these things. Who is going to be using it? How are they using it? And where will they using it? Because those answers tell you what you need to put in your computer and what you need to be prepared for. So let's kick it off. My first participant is Jacob Van Unen. But before we get to him, I'm going to talk about uh, the backwards. I mentioned people look at specs and go to scenarios. And we want to go to scenarios and look at specs. And Jacob Van Unen, who's here, I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I'm going to pull Jacob up here. Jacob wants to turn on his uh, camera, great job. 
Jacob did a really great job, and we're going to talk about that. Jacob, are you there? Unmute yourself, and we will uh, chat with you. There's okay. Jacob. Hi, Jacob. How's it going? Good. So what Jacob did a great job of is he looked at what needed to happen. And then in his design, and when he talked about it, he actually built it to address the concerns. So Jacob, as we before I jump onto a slide that talks about your computing design, what did what was the process you went through? What did you do certain things the way you did? I was looking for uh, to make it the most practical way you can make it by making it. Is it showing? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. It's showing. Go ahead, Jacob. So I tried to make it uh, as cheap but also practical as I could. So I had to research on what I had to go into a computer. Excellent. So I'm going to put this on the I'm going to put this on the screen, Jacob. And what I would like you to do is walk us through this, so you can see it on your screen. Yeah. Here's a really great thing that Jacob did when he was uh, in his proposal is he looked at what needed to happen. And so he said, look, I need it to be not too big, but you have to be able to see the computer screen from far away. And what that meant is he said, I want it to be about a 22 inch screen. Jacob, how, how far away are you from your computer when you actually are, are, are on it? Um, at school, it's pretty close to me, so I don't need it, it to be too big. And then do you have more than one student in your classroom? Yeah. And so sometimes when you're sharing computers, you need to stand back a little bit so everybody can see the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing that Jacob said is he said he wants faster loading and better performance. So he really wanted a strong processor. Um, the next thing was interesting. Jacob, you said you didn't need much GPU. Why is that a graphics processor? Because um, if you are not using this for gaming, then often you do not need it to look the best it could be. So like, it doesn't need to show the most high quality images for school. That's a great point you make there, Jacob. Um, if you're not familiar, there's a CPU, for, for everybody out there, there's a CPU, which is your main processing unit that does all the calculations and computations. But you can, if you really want a lot of graphic processing, so you're doing a movie, you're building a movie, or you're playing some games, have a lot of demands, and they need a special processor just for the graphics. And Jacob said, you know, if this is going to be used for, for school, you don't necessarily need a lot of graphics because you're not going to be playing high-end games, or let me put it this way, you probably shouldn't be playing a lot of high-end games yeah. in school. Is that right, Jacob? Yeah. You play a lot of games at school? No. Oh, good. That's good to know. Another thing he said, and uh, is he said it didn't need a lot of storage. Why? Why didn't you think you need it? Didn't need a lot of storage space on the computer. Um, because a lot of things you do in school don't often take up a lot of memory. Like, often the most you're we doing is downloading like images for a project, which don't take up much memory. So yeah, that's right. And you've got all this storage space. You said you've got storage space up in the cloud. So if yeah. you've got storage in the cloud, you don't necessarily have to have it on your PC. That was really interesting. Um, you also talked about a touch screen. Tell me a little bit about why you put a touch screen in there. So I put that in there for people who have trouble, like using a mouse and stuff, or more like like uh, little kids who can't like uh, do like use the mess in or the little touchpad as well. That's it. Excellent. So I'm going to tell you a funny story. Um, I'm going to go back in time. If you're ready to go back in time, pretend we're going back in time before there were touchscreens. So before there were tablets or phones. Um, and when they first were introduced, this is in the early 2000s. Uh, so they're, <clears throat> pardon me. When touchscreens were first introduced, people started to get used to them on tablets and phones as were originally. And we started watching uh, people, and I have some very young kids, 
And my kids would walk up to a, a big, we have a big screen TV and they'd start to try to touch the TV and say, dad, dad, the TV's broken. I can't touch it. And we're like, no, the TV doesn't know, but dad, it's, it's broken. I can't make it work. And as we were building computers and designing things, we recognized that people want to be able to touch their screens. And there's a, so much you can do with touch screens, especially smaller children when they're first learning. And they like to touch the screens and move things around. It's just much more intuitive. I mean, you have hands, you do that all day long, you touch things. Yeah. And so as you build computers, especially for younger kids, but even for older kids, having a touch element, even if you're really fast on a keyboard, touching and using the keyboard makes for a very good experience, very interactive experience. And you can create applications and do a lot. So that was easy. And then I'm just gonna go to the last two things you said is, uh, one of the things you talked about is what kind of price point were you looking at? So I was looking at it to be not too expensive, but I think that the, um, that the touch screen and such would may be the main things that will cost a bit. But like, I think because I didn't put a bunch of memory in it, it will be a, a quite a bit cheaper computer compared to other computers. Excellent. Okay. That was excellent. Thank you very much, Jacob. I really enjoyed your thought process was really precise. And I like the way that you went for this is what we need to do. This is a need. This is a concern we have. And you build a computer that met those needs. And that was how you described building that computer. That was great. So thank you very much for your time. Okay, we're going to keep moving on. So the next thing we'll talk about, what do you want for your school? And here are some concepts that people say. So here's some general principles of, that many people say. Now, you all built your perfect computer. The great thing about that is you build a computer that you want for your needs. And you'll see these designs are great. But here's kind of generally what people look for um, in versatility. They want things that does, does more than one thing. So a very versatile computer. And we've got some great examples of that. Some people want to show off their style. So the design elements are really important. Um, another key thing that people are looking for in their computers and their devices is they want to make sure it's connected to a cloud. So your homework is safe from digital dogs eating it. If you accidentally have a dog that bites your computer or does other things on it, or you drop it, or you spill water on it, you want to make sure that your data is safe. And then the fourth big thing that usually comes up when we talk about designing for school children or for schools is cost. Cost, cost, cost. Nobody wants to pay a lot for a computer. So let's go to a great example of versatility. Ara Kinney. Let's jump on. Ara, talk to me. Hi, how's it going, Ara? Ora, Ora. Okay. It's going well. You look great. Um, so let me talk a little bit what Ora did, and I'm going to show you on my screen. We'll go back to Ora's, Ora's design. So Ora is the CEO of Bramble Tech. Correct, Aura? She made her own computer company. And I've got a, an image here of her computer. She laid it out nice. It looks like a nice laptop, a lot of good features. You can see she's got a camera. Um, and she also attached to her computer, she's got some, some glasses that were really cool. But there's a specific feature that I liked. And I want you to explain it, Aura. It's the keyboard on your computer. So I'm going to stop sharing. Tell me about your keyboard. What was this keyboard? Why did you do it this way? Well, um, I don't type with like my hands, the F and J. It's hard. It's hard to get used to. I'm pretty fast and I use like all of my fingers and not like boop, boop, boop. But um, it's, it's hard, and I've always wondered why that wasn't an alphabetical keyboard. It would make it so much simpler if it were in alphabetized order. And that's why I wanted to make that a feature. And then my mom um, brought to my attention another issue of people in different countries 
it's harder for them to use the keyboard. Take China, there are over 700 or 7,000, something like that, uh, characters. There's so many characters. Um, and it's hard to represent it on a keyboard. Um, it's basically the equivalent of trying to fit all 26 letters on one key. Um, and I thought that was really interesting. And so my design was that the keys are still physical. I like typing on physical keys. To me, typing on a screen is not always enjoyable. Um, but the letters themselves are digital. And so you can change the settings on the keyboard so that you could have like the traditional QWERTY keyboard or you could have an alphabetical keyboard for younger kids or people who don't know how to type or you could change it to a whole different language. That was, that's excellent. And I, what, again, Aura, what I really want to say was, <clears throat> uh, I was impressed with your thought process is you looked at a need and said, how does that need translate into what my design needs to do? And that's, again, it's a great principle that good designers use all the time. So I'm impressed with that. You mentioned that you wanted to make sure that the keys would pop up. I'm gonna tell you another story. Dell came out with an XPS 11 about six or seven years ago, which basically it was a flat keyboard. So it was flat, it didn't have the raised keys, but the keys would act, the keyboard could be changed. So it was dynamic. It was on, on a flat panel and it just came up when you wanted to come up, but you typed on it. And they thought it was gonna be really awesome. Uh, but what happened was people didn't, when people started playing with it, they thought the computer was awesome. They thought the design was awesome, but they didn't like not getting responsiveness because they didn't like typing on just like you, you mentioned before, a flat, uh, a flat surface. And so what they did, I mean, are you, or are you just, addressed their problem. I see you had raised keys that have little keys that change on the top. So I thought I was really impressed with that concept because you recognized and you mentioned you like that tactile experience of typing on the keys and having them respond to you. So it's a, it was a great innovation and it makes your device really versatile. It saves, you know, so another thing it does is it saves uh, computer companies a lot of money from printing different types of keyboards that don't get used. They print one keyboard and it comes up. And other companies have tried to do this as well. So very good thought process and a good process for uh, building this keyboard. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about and yours, it's a great example of design meeting uh, a need and uh, making your computer very, very flexible. So thanks, Ara. Uh, I also liked your glasses, and we're going to talk a little bit more about glasses later on, but this was uh, what I want to talk about in your device. That's Ara Kinney, and she did a wonderful job, and thanks, Ara. The next one we're going to go to is Zoe Sharp and Bentley Wright. You there, Zoe and Bentley? Are you there? You can see, in the, are they in the... Uh, <clears throat> yep, I see them, I think. You got to unmute yourself. Okay, Zoe and Bentley, how are you today? Good. So Zoe and Bentley came up with a purse computer. I'm going to show it on the screen again. And as I show it on the screen, I would love for you to walk me through it. What did you do here? We wanted, we thought our computer could be a purse computer because we thought it would be cool. He's showing it on the screen. I can see it on the screen here. You're good to go. Um, so it will have two compartments on each side of it, and so it will just like fold into a purse, and then you can just fold out some um, things to get to the 
now headphones and seat. So the seat is kind of just a fold up thing where you just fold it in and it will like fit in that compartment. And, and the headphones and mouse, the headphones would, the mouse would have a little hole for the headphones to connect to the mouse. And then the mouse just would make the headphones connect to the computer. Awesome. So I can tell that both of you are very stylish. I like your, uh, your little head thing on. Is that Zoe's got the head, the, the little horns or the are those spiders? Oh, those are awesome. I can tell you're both stylish. And it, this is a really good example of some style and design, adding some style. Because it looks like you folded your computer up and it turns into a purse. So it looks like you would never guess that you're actually logging around the computer. It's a nice little purse and everything is inside. Do you ever sometimes lose your ear, earbuds or your mouse or things like that? You're nodding your head. You sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes I lose the chip to my wireless mouse. I do too. And it's nice if you have it all in a purse where it's contained. I'm going to show you what I've got. You see what this looks like? This is my composition book. Yeah. You know what it really is? It's actually my iPad. So I like the design of having something that looks like one thing, but is actually another. And so when I open it up, or I leave it around. People think I'm just looking at my composition book or maybe taking notes. A purse is something like that, where you, you've got it all nice and compact. I like your design. I'm going to show it on the screen again, um, because you spend a lot of work, a lot of time, really making it look like a nice high-end purse. And other companies do this as well. Uh, iPhones will usually have a version of the iPhone that's super, super expensive and gold plated and stuff. And is a designer iPhone for those who want it. But this, I like how everything is compact and portable and it all folds up and you've got a spot for everything. The design is a critical element and I think you've done a great job. I imagine you both, uh, I'm guessing you like to design things because you've done a, a nice job in designing this. Do you also like fashion design by any chance? Uh, not too much. A little. A little? Um, I, I know how to sew some things with a pattern, though. So I don't really design things, but I know how to sew things with my grandma. Okay. Well, thank you very much for sharing. I really liked your purse computer. It's a great example of putting design elements into your computer. Okay, the next one I want to show is also another great example of design. And that is from Grace, Catherine, Aiden, and Nora. Are you there? Yeah. The DA Micro School, awesome. Okay, guys, tell me before, I, I mean, I've got it in front of me, so I know, tell me, what inspired you to build your design? And tell me a little bit about it, and I'm gonna put it on the screen here in just a second. Um, um, well, I think, we just, we just really Mama! like, <laughs> we really like Harry Potter, so we're just like, like, what if we just made a computer that was like Harry Potter themed? Like, that would be really cool, so. Ah, uh, so now, now I'm gonna really, I'm gonna show you off, show everybody what you did. So Grace, Catherine, Aiden, and Nora built the Hogwarts Student Portal. And here it is. It's a design based on all, everything from Hogwarts. Because I imagine you all must be big Harry Potter fans. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, but before we go, I want to find out what house you think you belong to. But I love the design elements on this. You looked at the movie and you made it a fun computer. You can even see on there, you, you built a mouse that looks like it's, uh, is it a wand or is it the broom? It's, it's a Harry, Firebolt. It's Harry a Potter. Firebolt 2000? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> and you know, 
something else I really thought was uh, interesting. You spent a lot of time and a lot of work trying to get it really precise. I love how you designed it. You've got a slide out, you've got a pen pad, you've got a pen compartment. Um, and then on the back end, if you look at the back, you, you detail, it's a Harry Potter themed computer. And you've got one, your pen is not any pen, is it? It's, uh, it's, it's the Elder one. It's the Elder one. And, and so here you go, you've got a pen that's an Elder one. Anybody that loves Harry Potter is gonna go, this is my favorite computer of all time. I love it. I'm watching downstairs. <laughs> okay, so first of all, what houses do you belong to? Who, are you Slytherins? Um, no. No Slytherins, are you uh, Hufflepuffs? No. No, I'll, I bet some of you are Ravenclaw. This looks like a very Ravenclaw-ish computer design. Or Gryffindor? Uh, Gryffindor? I don't know. Gryffindor and Ravenclaw? So I'm going to tell you another interesting story. So I love that you incorporated the design elements and tried to take each of the things because that's something else. You want people to love your computer. You want people to enjoy using it. And many computer designs are bleh. I say blah. I, I, I actually don't mind the blah. But I know that other people, we talked, I've interviewed many, many people about computers. And a lot of people say they don't want their computer just to be boring and black. Like uh, some computers that, one of my favorite computers is the Lenovo ThinkPad. It, it looks very professional, but it is really, it kind of has a boring look. They want it to be looking very businesslike. But for school, I love that you pulled in the elements of something that most school kids love, and that is Harry Potter. And I'm going to tell you a story. Again, I love telling stories of what happened in the world because, let's go share my screen here. In 2015, HP said, we want to do something just like this. We want to build a computer that is based off of The Force Awakens, off of Star Wars. And so they built this computer. You can see it on your screen, which is a Star Wars computer. And it even has, if you look across the bottom, it has like a scrape, like remember um, Kylo Ren, you know, somebody gouged, put a, a lightsaber through his face. And um, they've got all this cool stuff in, in it. And they, they built it specifically for people who were Star Wars fans. So Star Wars fans can say, I love this. This is a design element. I want to be a Star Wars fan. I'm gonna show you that I am a real, true Star Wars fan of The Force Awakens. So thanks DA Micro School for sharing your design. I love the Harry Potter design. The next thing we're gonna to go to you. is- we're gonna... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about another type of, of device because we had a lot of people came up with wearables. Now a wearable, is exactly what it says. It's a device that you wear, whether it's a wristwatch or whether it's a glasses. Now, these are just normal Costco reading glasses, but you see there's Google glasses and there is the Oculus Rift and there's the Microsoft HoloLens, which lets you do some incredible things. But you can see here, these are different. These are not the standard computers that you think of when you open a computer. And we had uh, several teams, including, I talked about Aura, who included glasses that connected to her computer. And um, so let's go in, let's talk about the Arnett Academy, how we've got McGuire, Cruz, and Colin there. I see you there, you need to unmute yourself, you ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your wrist tech. I've got it on the screen here. It's a wearable watch, and I know that uh, somebody's wearing it. Well, well, I'll show you your picture too. But why did you want, I want to know why you wanted to put something on your wrist. Um, you can it's, carry it and it's easy to hold. And like, I wear bracelets and they never really bug me. So that's why. We, um, Colin, go ahead. A lot of times you have like a computer and you don't bring it home usually because you don't want it to get broken and stuff. But if you have the wrist watch, you can just have it on your arm and go anywhere. Yeah, and it's portable, so you can take it anywhere you want, just to keep it on your wrist. And you can take it off, and then you can use it. Hold it up here to the camera. And you can like, and there's this stand up thing, so you can do this and you can type on it. 
is excellent. So there's a couple of really interesting points you made. Um, you talked about the need for portability, and that means taking it wherever you go, because you, you're you're always frustrated. Oh no, I left my computer at home. But if it's really tiny, and you even build a stand, I loved how you put a stand on it so that you can actually take it off because it's hard to type like this. Trust me, I've got a, a Fitbit that I love, but I don't really ever type on it because it's really hard if it's right on your wrist. But if you can set it down and even attach other keyboards to it, a bigger keyboard, then it becomes something you can use more often. So I love the thought process that went into, I don't, it needs to be portable and take with me. And then something else that I thought was really cool is you have some sort of a VR component. Tell me about your virtual, VR stands for virtual reality. What does that mean? What, what is the VR component to your watch? So the VR is just, um, so yeah, so this right here, you can take it off and flip. So it's like um, glasses. And then, so some things um, you can look at, like on Dreambox, you can actually put the goggles on and then see around you. So it's not just on the screen. Mm -hmm. And you can like, Keep going, keep going, tell me more. You can, like whatever you're learning about, you can look around so you can learn about it more better than just typing it. You can actually see it around you, so. Like with stories and stuff, mm -hmm. like bookshelf. I love it. You, you bring up a really great point. In your learning, seeing things on the screen is great, but sometimes getting immersed where you can see everything and you can look around and you can explore your surroundings is a benefit if you're learning about things, correct? So I love that you put some VR into that as well as having it super portable. So you can do everything. Another company, I think about other companies that have tried different things. Um, a while ago, one company, Asus, um, wanted to build a, a phone that would then turn into a computer. So you'd take your phone wherever you went and you'd plug it into a bigger computer and it would be the computer engine. And that was an interesting design because if people could use the same device, it had enough power in it to power their computer. When they wanted it to be big, it would be big. And when they wanted it to be small, it was small. So I love your design. I love your thought process and all the work that went into thinking about, and going back to that first principle, how do people want to use a device? And then how can I build a device that meets that need? So thank you. The three of you did a great job. And thanks. We're going to go on to our last one. Thanks. Thank thanks, you. Guys. OK, the last one, the last design, Brielle and Levi Eisen. Are you there? Hello. OK, Brielle and Levi, um, I'm going to I'm going to show this on the screen and then I'm going to we're going to go back to you and you're going to walk me through as we uh, So tell me about your gloves and glasses. Um, so her gloves were supposed to be like the computer because like they're a lot more easy. They're easier to transport and they're just like something that's like no one would know you actually have a computer on you. And then the glasses were just your way to like because you need some sort of screen. So we decided to use glasses because those are also very portable and they're just an easy way to uh, see your screen. So I've got a question for you. Do you, you, you got several people, when you're working on your screen, do you like it if somebody sneaks over and, and, uh, and peeks at your screen? No. Or works over your shoulder? No. You don't? I know that that's one thing my wife, when uh, she's reading something on her computer and I come over and I lean over to say, hi, she says, wait, wait, hey, just, you're crowding me. And when you're doing school work, it, I thought you're, uh, the idea that you and many other people came up with, having glasses that only you can see were really interesting because you can, again, there's a VR aspect, but it's also you have the information and nobody else is peeking over your shoulders. And you're also not distracted. I personally sometimes get distracted. Like I'll see a squirrel. Squirrel. And having glasses that kind of I that, that block out all the other stuff around me if I'm trying to get work done, seems like it would be very helpful. So nobody peeks. 
and I can, I'm not distracted by everything else. And I love your gloves. And if I'm going to put this back on the screen again to show you, show off these gloves, these are some nice looking gloves. Now I may not wear these gloves because um, I may not, I may want other kind of gloves. Like I might want the, you, you know, do you guys ever see uh, the Avengers that the one glove, the gauntlet? I like, I might want one like that, but these are cool that you put the, the CPU, the GPU, everything else you need. And um, one thing I loved about them is you can cast to other devices with the glove. So you can cast to your glasses or you might be able to cast to a screen. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was one other aspect about your glasses I liked is if you take the glasses off, what does it do? If I take my glasses off, I set them on the table, what does it do? It projects as a hologram of a screen that you can interact with with the gloves. So that way, if you don't like wearing glasses or you just want like every other people to be able to see what you're working on, you can do that and still interact with it. Oh, that is amazing. Your brain must have been thinking like at 100 miles an hour to, and you must have gone through a lot of different iterations because I love the thought again, the thought process about seeing a need that maybe I don't wanna wear my glasses or maybe I wanna share. And how do I do that? I take this off and it projects. And this is pretty cool science fiction stuff. There are no other companies that I've known that have projecting glasses, um, like what actually project a screen or a laptop in front of you, especially a hologram. But I love the creativity and not being limited because there's a, there's a concept of don't let yourself be limited by what you can do, because how are you ever going to figure out what you can't do or figure out new things? So I love your design. And it was very a very inspiring design that incorporated some design elements really nice, along with some creative solutions to problems we have today. So thank you both Brielle and Levi for your great design. Appreciate it. Okay. Now, I'm going to get back to the last few things I want to talk about. I'm not going to talk about processors or battery life. Well, actually, I'm going to talk about battery life for just a second because there were some interesting con concepts in all the designs, and we didn't have time to go through every single design there are that we received. But there were a lot of interesting concepts of power solutions. So think about, pause for a second as, you, as you're watching this video and think about how much of a charge do I need? Do I need six hours, eight hours, 12 hours? And I think it depends. If you have access to a plug, maybe you don't need a lot of power. But if there are four or five or maybe eight or nine people in your class and there is two plugs over on the side of the wall, maybe you do need more power. So to go the whole day. A goal for many computer companies is to make one that lasts really 12 hours in a real life situation. And some of the creativity I saw in other designs and even the ones we saw is some people said they would have a solar power device for recharging on the go. So uh, when you're out doing, let's say uh, a nature hike or something and you want your computer to be charged, if it has a solar panel, it charges it constantly. Uh, I saw one other person that said it would be a motion charger, where if you move, it would actually rotate something and or make something move and, and generate power. You've all seen those flashlights you shake and they generate power to go on. So power is an interesting, uh, an interesting dynamic. But the next thing I want to talk about, let's think about, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a break from the designs and I want to think about what do you do during the day? So I sat down with, with my children. I've got four children. I've got two third graders, they're twins, and an, a seventh grader and a 12th grader. But I sat down with my twins and said, what do they do? What are some things they do during the day? And they watch videos, they research topics, they write things, they take notes. Um, a lot of stuff that with they're doing with their uh, some remote learning sometimes. My other kids, they're having to scan pictures. So they have to take a picture and scan it and put it in the computer. And I know at Prenda, you've got the conquer mode, collaborate and create. And in conquer mode, you're doing Khan Academy, maybe Lexia, collaborate. So when you take those things you're doing during the day and you think, how can I design a computer that lets me do these things? 
So what do you want? If you want to watch a lot of videos, you need to have good, good connectivity, right? You need to make sure that your Wi-Fi is really strong, especially for multiple people. You need to make sure it's easy to see for you, or maybe you're projecting something. And so maybe you build a projector into the computer, kind of like the glasses, but in the computer that goes on a big screen. And you maybe if you're watching a lot of videos, maybe you want good graphic processing power. It depends on how much, what kind of videos you're watching and what kind of um, output you really need. So that's, that's, for example, looking at a need and how does that translate into uh, what the design means. If you're doing research on the internet, you need a good keyboard, not a piano keyboard. I've got the piano icon, that was just for fun. A good keyboard to make sure you can type easily. Maybe you need a lot of RAM memory for lots of tabs that are open. If you're on a screen, you definitely need a fast connection. Now, something that a lot of people in the real uh, business world use is they have two screens. In fact, I've got two screens. My brother, who works for a financial services company, has four screens because you've got to do a lot of different things. Having two screens, my wife is an attorney. On one screen, she's doing research. On another screen, she's copying and she's writing. So she doesn't have to switch between tabs. So maybe you have a computer that has a screen that pops out or that folds out. Taking notes. Now I want to talk a little bit about this because there's some incredible things. Several people included pens in their design. Now, as far as using a pen, did you know that your brain works differently when you're writing with a pen than it does when you're typing? They've done lots of studies and they found in a note-taking situation, it's better if you're actually writing. When you're typing, oftentimes what you're doing is you're transcribing what the instructor is saying. So you're typing, 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 and it goes in and comes right out. When you're writing, you go actually goes through a different part of your brain where you process the information because you're not just transcribing, you're actually, what I do, and I, for me, is I will doodle a little bit, I'll take notes, I'll draw pictures, I'll put key words. But in our research, they found that people actually have a different processing with their brain when they're writing than when they're typing. So just a hint, when, you're, when you wanna take notes in a classroom situation, think about writing it with your hand rather than typing it. Now, both of them work well. There's just a different brain process as far as how your brain takes that information and processes it when you're work working with the stylus. So um, I mentioned some of the things that are important here. Go to the screen. Using a stylus or a pen maybe on your screen, you can still have it on your screen and you can write. Having a tablet type functionality, which several people have thought about. Um, another important thing for writing is making sure you have online storage whether it's a Google Drive or OneDrive or iCloud, that once you finish with your notes, you don't have to worry. They're always with you wherever you need to go. So having an online storage is important. Kind of going through these scenarios again, um, one of the things that my kids do and they told me that we need to have is something to scan pictures or taking pictures to share. Because, uh, all, for example, many of you turn in your uh, this project, you took a picture and you shared it. And I've got, a, I've got a little light that has a hole in the middle so I can hold my camera over so there's not a lot of weird shadows when I'm doing that for my kids. We got specifically for school. So a flexible camera scanner, maybe that you take off and you can move around. Uh, something you get a good lighting so there's no shadows. Or something that, that you know, trying to hold up, look, here's my assignments. Ah! And taking a picture with your PC camera doesn't work as well as often. Conquer mode, I've got, maybe you have a writing pad to do math equations, or when you're reading in Lexia or something else, you wanna make it real portable. So you can shift it and turn your device into a tablet you can take with you. Maybe you need two screens, one that's up there and one that's connected, or TV projection. So this is, these are some of the things you can do. Collaborate, I had a lot of ideas um, from my mini classroom on collaborate. So like, for example, maybe you want a recording studio. Maybe you want to edit videos for some of your collaboration projects. Maybe you want multiple keyboards or somebody uh, came up with a design for a pen for drawing on walls together. So they would actually take like a computer pen and people could write different ideas or concepts on a wall, not with a real pen. And it would remember all of them and pull them together. I've seen that actually done in conference rooms 
for um, not kid school collaborations, but for adult collaborations. And maybe you want more than one screen so people can work together and they can all have different inputs and be working on the same project at the same time. And the last thing, create. Maybe you want to do video recording. There's a, a Surface Studio. Microsoft builds a computer. Uh, it's a Surface Studio that has a lot of interesting design. They've got a, a what called they call a puck, which lets you bring up different tools on the computer. It's like a mouse, but it sits. You actually move it around on the screen, and and it does different things. And uh, the last thing is that if you're actually doing create, you are connected to a makerspace. So one of those printers that prints objects, those are awesome. Those are just a few of the designs and ideas that taking your situation and then saying, what do we need to do? How did that might translate into things that I wanna put in my computing device or things I need help with to make it easier for me to do? And I think looking at all of the different, we had almost uh, 30 different submissions, over 30 submissions. It was amazing to see what you've done and some of the ideas you came up with to meet your specific situations in your classroom. So that's the end of today's virtual expedition. I hope you enjoyed this Prenda challenge, this create challenge, having everybody work on the same thing at the same time. If you have any comments or questions, please uh, send it to us at Prenda, send it to your, your guide and she can forward it on. If you like this, let us know if you liked it. It was the first time we've done this and we hope you enjoyed it. And it's been fun chatting with all of you and seeing your brains go off at work. And uh, thanks, you guys all did a great job. And thanks for my special guests, Jacob, Aura, Zoe, Brantley, Grace, Catherine, Aiden, Nora, McGuire, Cruz, Colin, Brielle, and Levi, who helped me do this presentation. You've done a great job and I appreciate your help. We couldn't have done it without you. And now, I'm going to turn it back to Danielle. Do we have anything else or do we say goodbye to everybody? We are ready to go. We do have a comment in here in our Zoom that says, yes, we loved it. Which awesome. is <laughs> Thank you very <laughs> much. And those watching everybody. on YouTube, those watching on YouTube and Facebook, thank you as well. <laughs>